following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman on this ninth day of March. I didn't realize on Friday, the 6th of March, that was, in fact, six years ago to the day that I got the buy signal in the Dow. I forgot completely about March 6th. March 6th, I should have realized that because March 6th was the Dow's low. And March 9th today was the S&P's low year, six years from today. Isn't that, who would have thought, as that market was turning from under 6650 or something in the Dow, that you would get a move to the 18,000s in six years. Quite incredible. Um, well, let's, uh, first of all, say thank you uh, to all our hosts uh, leading into the uh, 11 o'clock Tiger Technicians Hour. Thank you very much to John and Steve. Now, this is going to be very interesting. We've got Larry Pesavento. We've got a good lineup today, as always. And we're going to be listening to all these various uh, discussions about cycle dates and, and um, uh, different ways of looking at the market. But what I find absolutely fascinating is that every once in a while, when all the little ducks are lined up exactly to give you something like the, the, the major buy that, well, it turned out to be a major buy signal back in March the 6th of 2009. The time certainly didn't know. Thought it was going to be a bounce and then a retest, but instead it just kept going higher. Um, and we actually were lucky enough to hold that Dow Diamond for uh, the DIA from the 6650s, I think it was, to um, for... A huge gain over 18 months. But the issue really is <clears throat> the missing leg D here in the E minis. You can see it in the weekly chart. The SP will have to change to the next contract, but it's the same thing. The high of 2,117.75, perfect in the daily charts. All the daily charts just gave perfect sell signal to sell uh, to sell mode signals, ready for a nice counter trend bounce right here. It's so upsetting when you get if if I was in leg D, not I. If the S and P was in leg D in the in the weekly charts, I would have no compulsion. But in fact, I would have been forced just to go heavily short and then see what happens. And instead, we've got this bounce area that's going into that ugly candle of Friday, and for the market to have another move here in this move rather than later. And to get in the, in the, I'll just run the numbers, in the Dow, uh, it would be, we're at 17,955 up 98. We're actually up 0.55%, but the S&P is only up 0.26%. And I, 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 I'm not impressed when that happens. I want, uh, I want them much closer. I always like to see the S&P just a little bit. In fact, right now, the S&P, instead of being up 5.44, up 0.26%, it should really be up. 10.70 that that's the that's the differential that i like between the dow and the s p um and if the 500 stocks are weaker than the 30 stocks i gotta put a lot of weight on those 500 right now it needs a lot of catching up to do not only that you finally got the ibb not participating it's weaker the nasdaq biotech stocks a little bit weaker and that's a little unusual. And you've got that news with Apple. So let me give you the numbers. And as we go through it, I'll give you the, um, I'll, I'll give you all the different uh, parameters that at least I'm looking at. I have in the Dow. I'll go to my the chart that I show my subscribers. Wow, subscribers! I hope uh, <laughs> you were able to get to the at least some of the charts. The 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 over. I think it must have been a dozen charts or something that I sent out over the weekend. All very comprehensive, looking at this particular market stance, where we are, what we're doing, wh um, what to expect. Uh, what's the upside potential? What's the downside potential? But most importantly, in this particular chart right here, let me move this up. 
Uh, the uh, VIX is gone. The 120-minute chart made a peak E at 15.83. You can always expect a little bit of a pullback from a D or an E. You got that before with the D. And now you've got a, a trough C in the 120-minute chart that's popping up. And the the um, the, the short Chapman Wave short-term trading index actually bumped right up to 2.04. And that tells me that within uh, two sessions, we should have a very nice push to the upside in the futures. Isn't that interesting? Maybe that's already occurred. Um, so now what we're looking at, this is what I was showing. You see the little down channel here in the daily chart of the Dow? And it says <clears throat> that... If we continue down very sharply, if today by the end of the day, instead of being up 99, the Dow is actually down 40 points and the S&P would be down even more, it would be down five points, that would say that that dash green line support level is going to be something to watch. Meantime, I'm looking at the outer trend line channel and that says that round about um, by the end of the week, maybe the first week of first day of next week, we could be retesting, we could be testing the lower levels in the Dow of the 17,700 to 17. 2600 at this particular point we have to see if there's going to be a bounce you see I, I, I drew in that arch formation up to the channel line we're going to see if there's even a chance of the Dow getting to the 17,970 to 18,000 and I'd say 18,020 maybe 30 area that's going to be a big test if it's able to hold there okay so uh, and this is what I show my subscribers every day so yes the Dow daily perfect peak E 18,288 on the uh, th 2nd of, of uh, March, the very next session has a fractionally lower, low, uh, fractionally lower high at 18,281. I call it the Chapman Wave two-bar reversal. Went under the nine-period moving average. I should have anticipated Friday's very sharp decline. I was tr we were trying to get short, but we missed reshorting. Uh, it's a pity, but we'll have another chance. There's always another chance in this business. You've got to be patient. Now, what's going on is the MACD and Stochastic are very poor, but the 120-minute chart, if I can find it right there, held the 200-period exponential moving average and is bouncing, trying to get to the 19,770s with the nine-period exponential moving average. It's going to be a really big test of internal support. Now, the um, weekly chart has gone to leg D and a silent doji candle the previous week uh, to that leg D high of 18,288 and now it's holding the nine period exponential moving average. The monthly chart had a very quick E to F or E slash A, F to B, F slash B alternate count in the monthly chart. We don't really have to be looking at the monthly chart just yet because it's not even halfway into the month. Um, let's give a little bit, I, I'm going to leave it for now, other than to say a Dow close this month in March below 17,400 would be a negative to be very, very, um, um, it would be a persuasive argument to say that we're going lower into April. Um, and there's a good chance that we're going to be getting that, but we'll deal with that as we move along. Now, the S&P. The S&P right now, SPX.X, is... Um, at 2076.43, up 5.15, lagging. It should be a bounce today. Good start, but it should be up at the 2079 to 2082 level. To me, that would be a very nice bounce and say, hey, um, in a bear phase, usually you don't get such a strong uh, reaction to the action of Friday. But if there's a, a failure by the end of the day and the s and is only up two or less, that would be a that, that'll be a poor sign. Now the weekly chart has gone to that peak C, and I'll make a big deal of it. Why? Uh, because in the Chapman wave, may, uh, more serious declines like the one from 2019.26 that was made. I should put the date in there. Uh, the week of the nine, uh, 19th of September, 919. Oops, 9. 19. Um, that is exactly what you expect. Something pretty sharp under the nine period moving average. That was very sharp. 2019 to 1820, 100 point drop, 1,000 points in the Dow. Okay. So now what I'm looking at is that we're trying to hold the nine period moving average. Is there a chance that before we get the bigger move down? Oh. I, I got to spend time explaining this. I try to do things as visually as possible. I try to explain them so that if you were in your car listening or if you're on your computer but you actually weren't seeing the charts, you'd be already got fabulous charts to look at here at TFNN because of the, the technology that we use. But I'm going to explain it this way. There was a sharp 
decline from a leg C confirming a peak C on Friday at 4 o'clock in the weekly chart of the S&P. Normally, when I'm anticipating a longer and deeper correction, I'm looking for a D, E, or F. That says to me that there's a chance here that we have a pretty decent rally. The Dow does not have to make a new all-time high, but the S&P has to make a new all-time high above 2119.59, has to go to 2119.60, one penny higher to be able to get to that leg D, and it has to do it at this point. It will be leg D any time from today on. Why? Because Friday confirmed a peak. And you can't, Friday could have extended that to uh, leg C extension. But you see that resistance, and I spent a lot of time over the weekend with those charts, sending it out to my subscribers to show in the various time, time frames, the constraints of the upside, the resistance in the up channel, inside track, Chapman Wave, inside track resistance zone. That's a little zone right there where the price is almost always turned down. Or except for that one big smash of the downside in October, almost always you'll get the reversal to the upside in this little track here and that starts where this starts right here for this week it'll be somewhere around 2053 to it must not close below 2036 on the s p weekly chart leg f slash b it actually did confirm um that there was a lower high uh made last week in march Unlike the Dow, which squeaked to a new high in March, so that means you've got to wait till April's close before you can confirm a peak. Here we can get a, 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 new, um, a new peak in the monthly chart if there's no move the entire month of March above 2119.59. Okay, enough with that. Now let's run this quickly. QQQ. Uh, the QQQs uh, made that leg D in the end. Um, and it's the weekly chart that's got an E slash B. So at this point, you can get a, a, a pullback, sharp pullback. I, I think that Apple, I, I don't know about the news, big deal set's got to watch. I mean, I happen to, as long as I've been around here, I've always said, wouldn't it be nice to have a little kind of thing like a watch on my wrist that just gives me the price of the Dow every, every minute of the day? In any case, no matter where I am in the world, I try my very best to keep up with intraday action of the market. I just That's just what I do. It's one of the reasons why, for my subscribers, I know that every once in a while I'll say, buy it before 1040 or 1042 uh, because of this and this and this. Um, it's just having been in the market for so long, you just get to know time frames a little bit um, uh, uh, with greater comfort so that you can say, hey, that's about when this particular stock should be doing whatever it is. And that's when you want to either buy or sell or don't buy it if it hasn't done it by that time. So looking at Apple, it says to me, yeah, there could be a little bit of a pop-up, but Apple is suffering from peak D in the, in the, in the weekly and peak G slash C in the, um, in the daily. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Just let's run the numbers. Gold is uh, gold is up three. Silver is down just a fraction. Uh, crude oil is up about a point. Uh, High-grade copper is up. Oh, I'll, I'll be back, and we'll talk about it on as soon as I get back. Pastor Chapman, Tiger. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Zero five one. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, folks, so let's look at something here. You've got the um, DZZ, which is the DB Gold Double Short ETN in leg six, uh, leg C, probably making a peak C today if it doesn't make a new high above uh, seven. 756 and that says that it's getting close this entire area this area right here that wasn't a c minus that was a, a g c minus and that's a very important area because it's been the resistance zone up in the 780s of course if it gets to the 780s <clears throat> being the fact that these things uh, shrink all the time i mean look at this chart here uh, the DZZ was once upon a time way above 40. It went down as low as 3.83 and is tracking now at 7.52 monthly chart. Made a peak C1, C2 at 8.33, um, but there's a good chance it's going to go above that at some point. And that would say that the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart of 764 will be critical because if it closes above there, there's a good chance it's going to try to tackle the high of 813 uh, made back in November of last year. And that would say that gold at GC, right, through the continuous contract, has further to go and that it will probably test both the low candle of the week of the 5th of December at 11.42 and the low of November, the week of the 7th, of 11.32. Uh, Let me just double check. GCJ, I suspect, is a GCJ. Let me just double check. 
uh, yeah, April. So the April low, okay, I'm not going to, yeah, I think it's close. Yep, there it is, 11.43, uh, the low of the week of the 5th of December in the contract itself. So that's that arch formation that we always talk about with a lowercase h. And um, so far, there's nothing that seems to want to stop it from testing those lower levels. Now, um, within the context of what I'm looking at here, what is very important? Well, the XLF has been holding quite well. Had a lousy day on Friday. It had a very nice move up with the that whole bank um, issue that was kind of resolved and, and and Bank of America had a favorable reading and it went all the way up to 2466. It unfortunately closed at 2419, um, uh, 2423, almost the low of the day. And now look what's happening. <clears throat> it's under the nine period exponential moving average. So this is gonna be an important period. My suspicion is that it'll be the late spring, early summer where uh, the XLF actually starts to find some traction. Question the den, Basil, DZZ trades, no volume to speak of. Why bother? Because it's a chart. I, 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 am, I have personally traded DZZ uh, often enough. I happen to like it only because whenever I do it, I do not do it intraday. It's, just, it's, it's a straight Chapman wave notation that I'm looking for, and it'll do it. And the, the the irony is that you can get out quite quickly. I'm not sure why. Usually with light trading stocks, you have to wait forever for your actual fill. But so far, that's my experience anyway. The other thing is that I asked, uh, <clears throat> that was Confetti that asked me about the DZZ. Um, uh, how many do you not uh, GG. Oh, I haven't labeled the GC, GCJ contract just because we've only moved there. So I'll do it in the next day or two. Um, yeah, uh, it, it'll be labeled. And uh, GCJ, let me just quickly have a look at it. Yeah, I'll do the labeling. Uh, I, I haven't, I, I looked at it very briefly over the weekend. But I decided not. I was so busy. I decided not to not to do anything because it's made a peak C, which could be a C minus in the weekly. And I'm expecting it to go lower, so I think I've got time to do the notation. It's just it's off my radar right now, and I I, I feel a little foolish about it because I had the signals as it broke down. Uh, the GLD broke down. I should have immediately grabbed the DZZ as a short for my subscribers. Um, mentioning, I would mention that it's a very lightly traded vehicle and that you've got a specific price that you want it at. Don't just put in any old order. It's got to be at a specific price. The exit, I sometimes put no no price. I just say, I'm I'm out. And it's very close. Uh, close is fine. It just takes a little, th not, not a little time, but more time than you would if you just went click uh, in, in anything that has very high volume. So um, now let's uh, look at a couple of things here. So in looking at the spectrum of the indices that have done very well, you've got the IY. R. The IYI is the real estate or REITs index. Uh, it's an index, but it's traded like a, an, an ETF. And it's the I shares. And it made a peak E slash B in the monthly. I'm not prepared to even think about counting it. It's either an E or a B right now because I need to wait to see where the weekly chart every week going in through March starts to close because the nine period moving average is still a little bit lower than that in the monthly chart. So this is a very important vehicle. Why? Because it's, it's, it's interest rate sensitive and it usually does very well in this kind of environment. I'll be back. We'll talk about that and the, uh, and, and the TLT when I get back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $70. 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Darrow Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And we're looking at a Dow that's up 121, up 60.68%. SP is now improved. It's up 7. It's still way behind. And what's really interesting about this is that the QQQ series, well, let's put it this way the Comp Index is only up 7.39, up 0.15. And that's with Apple. The VIX Index is down two at 15.18 oh very interesting 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 so iyr is um at the point right now that it needs to take a stand it needs to make the low that was made on friday at 76.4 point three three it if it's going to take that out the next level of support is 75 30 in the uh, 200 period moving average of the daily chart it is also very close in the weekly chart to the moving average uh, support level and this is an exponential moving average 32 period exponential moving average right there is holding that support then you've got the um, weekly chart with the 75.49 nine period exponential moving average and it's trading at 76.80 right now it's only up a 38 cents after a, a gap down huge smash to the downside on friday so and it's got a, almost a one-to-one -one look in the weekly chart from the high that was made at 83.54, let me just type that in, 83.54, to 
to the low that was made on Friday. And that middle point right there, that doji candle looks like a halfway marker. So if ever there was a chance, an opportunity for a bounce to take place in the hardest hit sectors of the last week or two or three, um, this is one of those sectors. It should bounce if it can't bounce is telling us, hey, we're, we're taking a timeout here, and it's going to be a timeout of weeks, not just days, as, as, as usually did happen. And that's number one. And number two is when you look at the uh, TLT, which right... TLT, where am I typing? It says somewhere. TLT, which is the uh, Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, iShares. Uh, there's a little bounce going on. It's up 80 cents at 124.30. <clears throat> it took out the 125.90s uh, key support, gap down. This is the bar today that has to get above. Excuse me. A little sneeze there, huh? It has to get above the 152.92 low that was made back in February. Um, I don't think it's going to do that. And what it's saying is it has the same look as the IYR. What it's saying is, <clears throat> I'm now going to be in a trading range. And I'm going to be in a trading range at 124.29 right now. I'm going to be in a trading range that could take me to the 126, 127s. But that would be very strong resistance. And the support that's going to have to hold at this particular point is the 121s. The 200 period exponential moving average in the daily chart. But the weekly chart is suggesting that a cup formation is forming and that at some point, and this depends if I'm correct in my multi-year, decade-long um, discussion of the Japanization of U.S. Treasury bonds as the rates go lower and lower, just like in Japan, but I had a whole, a whole litany of points that I made for my subscribers over the weekend about the relationship with Japan, et cetera, et cetera, um, to what happened with their rates and with their stock market, etc. So this is going to be a little different. Why? Because we've had a, a tremendous success in going, coming off the lows of, of uh, 2009 with the anniversary right here of the S&P. 666, remember, was the low. And that's going to say, if in fact the... The, the extraordinary increase in the stock market and the benefit that it's given uh, people who subscribe to the uh, stock market in one way, one form or another, if that's to continue, then there's a really good chance that money will continue to come out of bonds and go into stocks. At the same time, the Fed... My suspicion is the Fed is going to be more cautious than people think. There's, there's bound to be some kind of report, especially if the market starts to head down in March into April. There's a real good chance that the, um, the Fed will get nervous and hold off for another period, any rate change. And we're going to be monitoring things like General Motors, Ford, etc., the, the uh, Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, and the uh, automobile companies, U.S. named automobile companies, as well as many other aspects, as well as the IYR, <clears throat> the iShares, the, the uh, uh, U.S. REITs index. And we're going to monitor those. Why? Because what else can you do with your money but put it into the stock market if you want? with the history that we've had so far for six years, if you want capital gains, are you getting, rarely are you getting them in the bonds. You can do that if you are trading and if you can get the swings, they're fantastic moves to the upside. But then it has given back all the gains that it made from late 2014. We're back where we started. So in the TLT, my suspicion is we're in a trading range. I don't have right now the um, the yield chart. But you remember the week this had gone to leg B um, in both of, in in all three: the 30-year, uh, the 10-year note yield, and the five-year note was just about to get there. So this is going to be very important in in terms of what happens if there is a market correction. The Dow drops six eight percent or ten percent. What happens to the, is this the time for the first time that bonds do not rally? We're going to be watching that. Now the dollar. So you've got the dollar DXY. Oops, I want to go to our, our first quarter. We've got our first quarter. Anyway, bonds are, I mean, the dollar is in leg B. 
um, and the DZZ, you remember, was in leg C. Uh, so we can watch the relationship here between the dollar and gold, etc. And we're going to go to Travis in St. Louis. Travis, how are you? Doing fine. Good. So I don't want to take I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I want to call and send my appreciation and give credit where credit is due. You kept me in this uh, trading position in CLVS last week. I know I was unable to call, and you answered my email, and I appreciate it. I, uh, I actually sold out of my trading position this morning at 80.40. Oh, very and nice. And so you kept me, you actually got me into the trade and you kept me into it last Tuesday and Wednesday when I was about ready to pull the plug on. And I think you said to put a trailing stop below it. And I never even had to worry about it because it took back off right. and uh, it went up and up to this point today where I was able to sell out right over that peak from last Thursday. So I appreciate your help with that. Uh, I'm going to keep the core position because I know we got the IBB and a peak peak D now, so I'm going to hold right. off on adding any more back until we kind of get through this correction if we get one. So first of all, I want to thank you because you brought it to the uh, to uh, TFNN listeners' attention, and you especially called in to discuss it as it was doing its various little prances and dances on the way up. And I think, in fact, um, the the way that you have handled it, besides being a, a very mature, very mature in the sense that it was very professional, I think that um, keeping the core makes a lot of sense because you are still expecting one way or the other that there should be a leg D above 93.33 in the monthly chart. That was the high back in 2014. And I had a pretty serious decline from 93 to the uh, mid 30s, and now it's back at 79.21. You got out at today's high. That's very good. Let me just see. I, I still have it going A, B, C. Could still go a little bit higher. I think the upside in points now is starting to become a bit limited. I think you've traded it perfectly, and I've got it as I can call it EF. I could even give it a recycle because the stochastic is still very good. But the MACD is hinting that it wants to turn down a little bit. Um, I think you did exactly the right thing. And as I say, maybe another point or so, but doing it, the, trading it the way you have and holding it the way you have, it's just two different mental uh, positions that you have to take, and you've managed to do that. So <laughs> congratulations. So um, this is, um, what, what was their, what was their, do you remember, what was their target in the cancer? I think it was cancer, right? Yeah, they have a they have a so, lung cancer drug. That's their big that's lung their cancer big drug. Right. That's, that's in phase three right now. Oh, very good. Okay, I think that's why it's doing well. Now uh, it's a very interesting thing because biotechnology stocks come in all forms. I met someone over the weekend who's working for a company I didn't even know about. It. It's right here in Lexington, Lexington Mass, and um, they are in rare rare diseases, but. It isn't just rare diseases, it is very rare diseases. And the stock has done fantastically, and I hadn't heard of it, I just checked out it. In fact, I only checked on it yesterday to see what, what, what they did. And it's just surprising to me um, how many biotech stocks there really are. Certainly here in the Massachusetts area, it's become a hub, an international hub. But what's very important about it is that the, there are so many of these stocks that have drugs within their portfolio that are in second and third stage like you've just mentioned mentioned clovis oncology clvs trading at 79.22 up three cents um stage three what what this portends it portends for me two things it says that there's a good chance that as the companies go into the the, the difficult stage of putting the product from a trial three into the sales department that sometimes causes a little bit of a hiatus in profits because there's a lot that has to go on in marketing and all sorts of things. That's number one. And number two is that there are so many now that it seems to me that the IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech um, ETF, it's iShare, is actually at a point now where the upside might, might have flurries to the upside, but I think that the root, the core of the... Um, of the 
stocks within it. And I, I shouldn't really talk about this as if I'm a scientist and I really know. I'm just looking at the stocks, looking at the action. And I think we're getting to the, the end part of this particular cycle. So how the IBB and stocks like Clovis and others, BIB, et cetera, Amgen, um, I'm watching them closely because how they act and how they react to any market conditions in late March, early April, is going to be very important because what I'm trying to do, for at least for my subscribers, I'm trying my very best to see if I can get the rotation into what could be the next cycle and sector that starts to move up and which cycle and sectors are completed in the, in the move that we've had, certainly over the last three years, but specifically the last two years to 18 months in some sectors. And as I said, the IYR was one of those participating fantastically on the upside over the last year and a half, and then all of a sudden it's just hit this barrier. So um, stocks like a Clovis are absolutely on my list to look at because in a sense it's, it's a little bit of a pilot like to see how they, they react and then how the big guy, the really big guys, uh, are acting in this particular market environment. So thanks so much for bringing it to our attention, Trey. Travis. Oh, I appreciate, I appreciate your help with it. Good. And let's see what happens now. So you're out of it. You got your call. We'll just keep it on our list yet to see what happens because of that leg C, peak C um, in the monthly chart, whether or not it's a lot of points to still climb to the upside, but the way it's acting, there's a good chance that in this cycle, it might achieve that. Otherwise, it's going to have to wait for a period of, of consolidation, maybe maybe to between 67 to 63, and then we'll see if it has the impetus and momentum to push to the next level. So thanks for calling. Yeah, Basil, real quick, too. Um, I just want to make sure I understand on the S&P. Yes. I know we got a, a leg or a peak C in the weekly. Correct. What, at what price level would you say, and it may be too hard to, to predict that, but at what price level would you say, if we got to this level, would you say that there's a chance that we might get one of those rogue wave peak Ds in the weekly or something like that that might pop up you know, before I, March I was, is over? I was, in, I was interviewed by Tom uh, last week, and what I was saying is that this particular week we're in right now, is the week if ever there was a chance that there was just a one sudden spike to the upside what we call the rogue wave in other words something is completed but there's this one wave that just never saw the sign that said high tide at noon and at 1206 it's still completing its move to the upside and then everything goes down this is the week and i would just say to you two things one is if the s and is at 2078 right now if it closes on Friday, below 2058, somewhere around that, 2050, 2062, 2058, I would have to say that that peak C um, probably is going to have to wait quite a while before we get to leg D. That, and, but at, on the other side, I've got to also say, you know what? That should be very bullish because it's saying there's an upside potential right that's the, that's the one thing the other is i would have to concede that it's probably going to abort and something i'm just the dow is doing everything that it should but the s p has failed to do that if the s p goes decisively under the low of uh, december the 19th where it was at 1972 a close under that in the next six weeks without having made the new high would say to me, uh-oh, you might be wrong about this whole thing. So <laughs> keep your one foot on the accelerator, one foot on the brake, because we need to know. I, I'd say to subscribers over the weekend that the next 25 points up or down in the S&P could give us tremendous directional uh, information. All right, I appreciate it. Good, thank you very much for calling. And if the S&P actually goes to 20, well, I'll be back. I'll talk about that you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments and whether you're bullish or bearish on u.s treasuries the etfs from direction shares are there to help you magnify your perspective bull etfs for a rising market and bear etfs for a falling market direction shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives risks charges and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing the prospectus and summary 
prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman. And I, let's see, what did I look at just a moment ago? <clears throat> yes, comment in the den. Uh, look at the XLU. Certainly, we spoke about that last week. I said the XLU, <coughs> the S&P Select Utility Spider Fund, uh, making a CF, um, FC top in the monthly, but a peak D, huge move from the from the f almost 50 area down to 43, 41 right now. That's big, seven seven points. And the the weekly, uh, the daily made a peak at 49.78. Uh, just before uh, February, uh, last week of January, and this is below the 200 period moving average. Yeah, things are happening that you can't deny in the uh, um, in the interest rate sensitive sector. Um, that's number one. Number two is within the context of um, within the context of the 
how can I put this now within the context of the various indices? If you look at the QQQ, you see that that did go to a D. If you look at the IWM daily, the IWM, the Russell went to a G slash C, but everything about it said that that should be a peak of consequences and a consequence. And I can put a down arrow with the implication that it doesn't look well, let me put it this way. A down arrow says that you've gone from a sell signal to a sell mode, meaning that the price is decisively under the nine period moving average. The MACD is turned down and the stochastic has gone from over 80% down to below. It's at 50% right now. That's they said, yes, you could get a brand new buy signal at some point, but the designation is that everything is in a down mode, right? And that's as it stands in the shorter term, the daily. The weekly says, I haven't even made a peak D yet in the IWM. I'm still in leg D. Yes, there's a good chance that I cannot get back to last week's high of 123.78. Uh, but right now, um, I'm just pulling back in a, with a MACD good, stochastic at 86%. And I have done the leg body, and that was the neck breakout in the uh, monthly chart, the pattern I call the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg in the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, uh, trading at 121.24 up 7 cents. So I've almost completed what I need to do, at least to go from a, a as a peak C to a D, make the neck formation, and I can come back. In a chapel with stalk leg formation, that's different to the propeller shaft that says there should be an equal move from the left side, low trough, to the oval pattern from the base of whatever that oval pattern is up, a one-to-one -one extension. This is different. This just says you've got the neck. I mean, you've got the body, and the neck sometimes gets tucked in for the stalk, doesn't stick out. So it's just a little bit higher than it was previously from 120.67 uh, or something like that. So everything's set here that says, hey, look at the MACD failing, stochastic under, it's at 82%, but it's struggling. So this is a very important period for the I IWM. Now, just before we get, we go into the wrap-up period, before we get to uh, uh, Larry Pesavento, let me just run exactly what I'm looking at here. In terms of the Dow, Nice rally today. Very nice rally. In fact, uh, I, my feeling was that we should get back at least a third of the of the loss of Friday. That extra percentage that was just smacked down after we were down, 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 and then tried to rally, then boom, smacked it down. Um, and that's a little bit more than I expected, which was about 70 points, 75. We're up 120 points right now. That is very nice action, but the MACD and stochastic are really not good. Price is the arbiter of a trend. So if the price goes to 18, 17,990 to 18,030, we almost be at the nine period exponential moving average resistance of 18. 1063. So the close today, giving back a chunk of what we've got, especially with the S&P still a little bit weaker, it's only up five points. This is going to be a critical two sessions between now and this time tomorrow to see whether or not we can have a stronger bounce or whether we make the arch formation and fail. And watch the VIX index. The VIX index right now at 1520. If it pushes into the 16s, we go down right now. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.